Good day, Grade Lemons. In this lesson, you're going to learn about VSEPR. What, you might ask, is VSEPR? Well, it's a terrible acronym for Valent Shell Electron Pair Repulsion. And why is this important? Well, the shape of a covalent molecule can be predicted by this theory. So it's a theory which seems to be working for all the atoms that we, and molecules that we've come across so far in chemistry. And what it is, is a model in chemistry which looks at the repulsion between the pairs of electrons around a central atom. And that helps us to predict the shape of a covalent molecule. So let's look at this excellent video on shapes of molecules. Shapes of molecules. The valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. Basically, this is known as VSEPR. And what this is saying is that electron pairs, because they're negatively charged, will move as far apart from each other as possible. And this is when a molecule will be the most stable. And this makes sense because electrons are negatively charged and, of course, they will repel from one another. So a model looks something like this, and this is just one example here. But if you imagined you had four balloons tied together and these balloons were negatively charged, they would move apart from each other at 109.5 degrees. So as far apart from each other as they possibly can be. When we write it on paper, because it's three-dimensional obviously, and paper's two-dimensional, we draw it like this with one at the top and three down at the bottom. And this is indicating that they're as far apart from each other as possible. So if we have a look at water here, you'll see that water has two lone pairs of electrons and two bonding pairs of electrons. And when we're looking at the structure of a molecule, it's important to look at both the bonding and the non-bonding pairs of electrons because they will all repel one another and they're all important in the structure of the molecule itself. However, when we describe or discuss the shape of the molecule, we only look at the position of the bonding atoms and the bonding electrons. So it is these bonding electrons that we care about. So we ignore the non-bonding lone pairs. So for water here, it shows a V shape. Here are some of the common examples. Linear arrangement. This just means a straight line. As you can see, these atoms here are 180 degrees away from one another. Chlorine will form this. And even though it's got these lone pairs of electrons on the outside, these are not involved in determining the final shape because we're only talking about the bonding pair of electrons when it comes to describing the final shape. Hydrogen chloride, it's the same situation here. Hydrogen doesn't have any lone pairs. Chlorine has three. These, however, are ignored when we discuss the shape of the molecule and it looks like this, a linear shape. Triangular plane. Plane means flat and triangle means that these are as far apart from each other as they can be. So they're about 120 degrees away from one another. Now boron trihydride is one of the only ones that will form this shape, the triangular planar shape. Tetrahedral arrangement is much, much, much more common in atoms. And this is because carbon and a lot of other atoms will bond to four other atoms to form this tetrahedral shape here. And this is when each bond is 109.5 degrees away from one another. So they're as far apart from each other as they can be. Methanes, another good example here. So you've got carbon in the middle with hydrogens as far apart from each other as they can be. And this is what it looks like when we do the modelling. Pyramidal shape. You've got ammonia here, which is NH3. But when we're looking at the shape and it's forming its shape, it takes into account this lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen. And thus, this will form that tetrahedral shape. However, when we're describing the shape of the molecule, we ignore this lone pair of electrons and we just look at the three bonding atoms and we get a pyramidal shape. And lastly, V-shaped, 
I showed you this is the original example. And lastly, V-shaped. Water, again, oxygen has got two lone pairs of electrons, which are important in establishing the shape. However, we only look at the bonding pair of electrons with the atoms attached when we look at the final shape, and here you'll see this V-shape. The non-bonding pairs would be here and are crucial in forming the V-shape of the molecule. So here's a summary. So you've got your linear, which is in a straight line, your triangular planar, which are flat on the ground, tetrahedral, which form that 109.5 degrees away from each other, pyramidal, which is the tetrahedral with the lone pair of electrons, and V-shaped is the tetrahedral with the two lone pairs of electrons, which give it that V-shape. Right, grade elevens, I hope that helped you to understand the shape of molecules. Unfortunately for you, you do actually have to go learn those shapes and how they are formed and because of the lone pairs of electrons that are repelling, etc. Also, please note that in South African curriculum, our V-shaped, we also call angular. So if you said that the water molecule had an angular shape, that would be perfectly correct. Right, please go study this and then when you think you know it perfectly, go and do the assessment in the two-enable system. Have a great day.